Hello, Reverend Jackie here, another assembly. And have you noticed, I'm on my own today. I haven't got any friends with me. Now, that could make me feel very sad, fed up, miserable and lonely. But do you know what? Even if your friends aren't around to play with, you can always go and meet new people and make new friends. And I think there are two really good ways to do that. One is just to give somebody a really big smile or to go out and help people and to be a friend yourself. So maybe that's something to think about as we light the candle. And it'd be really nice if I could light the candle first time, but we'll see. As we look at the flame, and I think I managed it, what's the flame make you think about? If you're a Christian, maybe you think about Jesus. Jesus is light shining in the world. If you believe in God, the flame could represent God's presence all around us. If you don't know whether to believe in God or not, look at the flame flickering and think of reasons you might or might not believe in God. If you know that you definitely don't believe in God, look at the flame and think about what is important to you. Or maybe look at the flame and think about something that is on your mind today. I don't know. I wonder what you're going to think about when you look at the flame. Let's look together for a few moments. Today I'm going to read you a little bit from a book that is about Amy Carmichael. It's called Rescuer by Night because when she was older she did some amazing things in saving children who were being kept as slaves and this was when she was working in India. But she didn't start living in India, she was Irish. So let's read a little bit about her because I think Amy was an amazing person who was a really good friend to lots of people. Amy Carmichael was born in Northern Ireland. When she was 17 years old, the family left the seaside home to live in Belfast. Living by the seaside was great fun. Moving to Belfast, it was a busy city and she had a really different experience living there. Her father sadly died shortly after they moved. While she was in Belfast, it was here that Amy first became involved with mission work. Missionaries are people who go out and want to tell people about Jesus, but also help them when they are in need. So it says that Amy was never the sort of person to stand by and watch. She had to be busy, she had to do something. And so when she saw children in the streets who were dressed in poor clothes and were very hungry and made to go and work in the mills, she decided she was going to do something to help them. And even though some people thought she was being very silly, she raised quite a lot of money to help them. As she grew older, her desire for missionary work did not leave. Now, she didn't have very good health. And if you're a missionary in Victorian times, it normally meant that you went to work and live in a country a long, long way away, which was very, a very hard thing to do. And so her friends thought, because Amy wasn't very strong physically, that she wouldn't be suited to be a missionary but it says here her friends had not taken God into account 
Amy wanted to be a missionary, go and tell people about Jesus and help them when they were in need. And God thought that was a good idea. So Amy first went to Japan and then finally to India. And she was living in a mountainous area, lots of mountains, lots of hills near Bangalore, when she found the work to do that she was going to do for the rest of her life. She set up a home for girls who had been rescued from being slaves in Hindu temples. Now today, we don't do anything like that. But in Victorian times, a lot of parents weren't able to look after their children in India. And so they would give their girls to the temple to be looked after. But of course, in the temple, they weren't being looked after very well at all and they were living like slaves having to do lots of things that weren't very nice. So Amy set up a home and she did all she could to rescue girls from the temple and she sometimes go by night and take the girls to safety. A house for boys was also built and a hospital so she was really very, very busy all her life. Amy's rescue attempts, Amy being a friend to other people, earned her lots of friends. Lots of people really liked her. But of course, people that were running the temples didn't like it when her, their slave girls were taken away. But even though Amy was sometimes in great danger, she carried on working in India all her life. She ran homes and did mission work for 55 years, which I think is incredible. So Amy Carmichael was a good friend to other people. She helped lots of boys and girls. I'm going to show you a story now from the Bible in which someone helped a man who was in trouble. We call the story the Good Samaritan. You wouldn't have thought that the Samaritan would help the man because Samaritans and Jewish people didn't get on with each other. But the Samaritan, he was a good friend. So let's see what happened. Take care of this man. If you spend more money on him, I'll pay it back to you when I come again. The 
Well, look who's come along. Purple says he's very sorry that he wasn't here at the start of the assembly, but he went off for a picnic in the woods with Love and Rupert Bear. It was the teddy bear's picnic, of course. And Love is reminding me that he is always a very busy teddy bear, but nonetheless, he loves it when he comes and joins in our assemblies. And they both want to tell you how much they liked the video of the Good Samaritan. I wonder, what did you make of it? Jesus told the story when someone asked him who his neighbour was, because Jesus said, that we should all go out and love our neighbours. And the man said, well, who's my neighbour? Is it the person who lives next to me? Is it a friend? And of course, Jesus said, no, your neighbour is anyone that you meet. So let's think about that. The Samaritan and the Jewish man would not be normal friends, but the traveller was in need and the man who'd come all the way from Samaria knew that he could help him. So when we go in the playground, let's be nice and friendly. And if we see anyone who needs help, let's help them. If there's anybody who hasn't got anyone to play with, let's play with them. And let's just think about Amy Carmichael and the story that Jesus told and being a friend to everyone. So let's say a little prayer. Dear God, thank you for the amazing work that Amy Carmichael did. Thank you for all the children that she helped. Thank you as well that we can learn from her life and learn from stories that Jesus told us. Today, help us to be a good friend to everyone we meet. Amen. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Our 
Now we're going to blow the candle out. It's time to go. And as the flame goes out, let's think about our thoughts, any ideas we've had, our prayers going ahead of us. And as we leave, may we go out with love in our hearts. So, till next time, goodbye from me, Reverend Jackie, goodbye from Purple, and goodbye from love. See you next time.